GI, lots been happening for you since you retired from footy. You obviously went across to uh, the Super League as well, played a couple of games for Warrington over there. Tell us what's been happening. Yeah, just following um, Joey's little travel, went over there to Warrington and play and, you know, it was, um, it was quite a great experience to be honest. I went over there and bought, in, bought into, the, into their culture, but... I did only get three games out. I did do one hamstring in the pre-season, running around, and then second second hamstring, which almost had to go into an operation for. So that's short term, but I stayed over there, been around the club, and you know look, did a little bit of travelling as well. But since then, they're coming back in in November. I just started up my own um, academy, Goenner Academy, which goes around, gives people tools, and talks about mental health and my own experience and what I've been through and just go around to schools, um, communities, um, wherever really, wherever it's needed. Um, there's only one of me, so it's, it's kind of hard to get out there and, and about in a, in a broader thing. How, do, how does that make you feel when you go and mentor or help these young kids and you see a smile on their face? Oh, you know, I could have went back into coaching, I could have done, you know, something around football, but I found my purpose now after retiring is, is doing this. And it gives me so much joy and so much pleasure seeing kids smile. And where's and that, that up, mate? Is that up, up the coast? That one was in Maxwell, but I've also got um, Orange, the Toowoomba area, Darling Down, so I'll go to Mackay, up to Darwin, um, just spreading it everywhere, anywhere, to, to be honest. Joe, is it about promoting rugby league and trying to find the next talent, or is it more just trying to trying to promote mental health amongst young kids. It's more mental health and making breaking down the stigma of mental health and that, that it's okay to talk about it and it's okay to have these troubles. And I'll talk to them about what I went through as a rugby league player, but also when I retired and not having that routine of focus and consist, consistently um, going back in day in, day out. So I talk to them about I lost that in, in a sense once, once rugby league happened, um, finished. But then I also, you know, give them the purpose of saying... I'm actually normal. I strip everything back. You know, you think I'm rich and famous and do all this here, but now I'm working a nine to five job Monday to, Monday to Friday. So, end of the day, take all this here, line right away. I'm another person with you with the same struggles. And I do talk to adults as well because they're the ones that's on ground there all the time. How, um, I, I, we've spoken about this at, at length, um, Joey and I, about that transition from retiring uh, to working out what your next move is and how much you struggled with it, Joey. How, mm. how tough is that time period in your life? Yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, unless you do, you know, what Gail did and, and stayed in that training re you know, resume and wanted to do that then and just be consistently, wake up, go to training, do what you're doing. But then once you retire, you know, Wayne Bennett said to me, he said when you come out of retirement, because he knew beforehand, before anyone else did, make sure you find your rhythm and stay to your routine as much as you can because routine's the most important. And I obviously didn't do that, and then, which, which then I went into rehab. Mm. I came out of rehab and I found my purpose by doing this. Mm. And what about going back and you're coaching Maxville? No, not coaching Maxwell. I'll uh, go back to play. So, oh, did you play? Yeah, so how, how was you know, I semi-retired. <laughs> Came out of retirement once, went to Warrington. Didn't obviously quite plan out. So I said, that, that's it. Um, but it's been 20 years since I played for him, for Maxwell. So I wanted to go back and you know, give back to the community. And I always said I wanted to finish off where, where it all started for me. And my dad and my family all played for him. And I obviously looked up to my old man and just go back. When you say give back to the community, what was the reaction from the people from Maxville when you came back and played? I, yeah. Because you got big it, crowds, didn't you? We, we did end up getting a big crowd for up there and it was a, our local derby. We played against Dan Buckerhead, so, you know, they just got back in the, into the competition. So it was, yeah, it was full, but it was fun. <laughs> and they did try to get a couple of headshots hit in on me and <laughs> jump on me you back, knees, knees in the chest or something, <laughs> or likewise. But end of the day, look, it's... Um, I got enjoyment out of it. I sat on the bench for the first 20, came on, you know, around and then went back on the bench the last 20, so... <laughs> yeah, you've also, been, um, you've also been up in Queensland camp this week as well, working with um, Selwyn Cobbo a fair bit. Talk us, t tell us about what you're, what you're doing with him. A little bit of, of a mentoring role, I believe? Yeah, I'm trying to ride a bike there. <laughs> but it's not <laughs> <absolutely. a> kid's <laughs> bike. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Bill asked me in camp and we started a mentoring role and um, just get around them. So, but, you know, he's... They, you have the three best statesmen or the three best rugby league players mm. that we've seen in, you know, in rugby league. You've got Kevin Smith, Billy Slater and Jonathan Thurston. 
So these kids actually look them like, yes, they're in all, but they're also their coaches. And so you, when you look at somebody as their coaches, you don't really think. So I'm in there as a mentor in the background, just keeping it light. Not like so much as an Alfie kind of role, but just <laughs> just more of a... Yeah. Just more of a just sit Selwyn, there and relax. Selwyn Cobber, you, the comparisons to yourself and Luttrell. Yep. Every, what were your first impressions when you saw Selwyn play? Oh, you know, for a young kid, he's never been selected in rep football for years as juniors. And then being selected in Queensland, he's like a, a deer in headlights. But he has that natural raw ability and that can read a game. Like Ali John, Alex Johnson is no slouch, yeah. as we all know. Yeah. And he's just, like I said, he's just remarkable young kid. He's quiet, he's respectful. And, <laughs> like, it's you freakish. can't coach that. Freakish. That things you can't coach. But when people compare him to myself, I just reassured him and um, said to him once again, you are your own player. You're here for your own reasons, and just be your. When you find your purpose in this, and just be be that player that everyone. Do you know? Again. Do you know what side of the field? I'm pretty sure him and coach both play on the right edge. We stay on the right edge and move coach to the other side of the field. Do you know? I cannot confirm or deny uh, any of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, come we'll, on, we'll just have to wait and see. No, it's uh, look. They they definitely do and. The, the Queensland side that Bill's picked is probably our best one we've seen in a very long time, especially for game one. Mm. Uh, uh, just um, a similar age for you two, Selwyn's 19. That was the same age that you were when you uh, made your Origin debut. I think he was three years of age when you made your <laughs> yes. debut, not trying to make you feel old. <laughs> yeah. But oh. how, what's your advice to blocking out the sort of the outside noise in the lead-up but then also coming on to that arena that is State of Origin? Oh. Yeah, you just got to... Take it in your stride. Don't play the game um, in your head beforehand. You know, get there, have your own routine, what you normally would do, but obviously on a bigger stage. You know, for me it was I had to jump in the ice bar for me to, you know, for me to flip, flip that switch to actually know that I'm going out to play. Before that, there I was all relaxed, a bit, bit of a clown, joking around in the sheds or, or whatnot. But yeah, my advice to Selwyn is just relax before a game, before a big game. Go over in your head your job. Just go out there, do your job, do your role the best way you possibly can. Mm. And that's all the team asks you to do.